This is part two of the old car edit. All right, so we're gonna work on these borders. I jump up here to the quick selection tool. I'm gonna speed through this process because it's gonna take a minute on this image. If you have a daytime image, you can do this super easy, really quick. But because this has a lot of difference between these two pieces, it may be a pain in the butt. So far, so good. Um, if you do big portions of selection, it's good to let off of your mouse, let the computer catch up, and it also gives you a chance to fix mistakes if you mess up. Like if, if the, the selection isn't where you want it, you've just done a smaller piece, it's easy to hit Control Z and start over. I'm sure at some point this will happen. We'll just keep uh, rolling through here until it does happen and I'll show you how that works. But for now, so far we've been doing pretty good. The first time I did this picture, these corners were really dark so the dancing ants kept jumping over here and I'm thinking once I get down past here it's gonna start doing that so I'm gonna work this side first get down here oh see there it just went and I had a pretty big area that I had just gone through and not let go of the mouse so I have to go back a little more I'm just gonna keep doing this as much as oh and then it jumped again so if this does happen an easy way to fix this is to Go to the film border, hold the alt key, and then drag, and that does the inverse selection. So we'll kind of work this here. Get this back on track. If you've got lots of contrast, like a bright, bright area against the film border, it makes it really easy for Photoshop to find the difference between the two, so the quick selection tool works a lot better. And sometimes you just have to coax it to get it where you want it and looks like it's right on track now so we're good there back to this gonna jump in here just a little guy here missed the pegasus on the logo gonna come down through here sometimes if you can work through other parts of the image photoshop has an easier time telling the difference between certain sections but no nope. see how it just deselected the whole bottom portion. Let's try one more time here and just see. No, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna jump over to the edge, hold the Alt key, try to get right along the edge of the border. So far this is doing well. Now it's kinda hung up here. Hung up again. Come to the left side. And you do want these edges to be as close to the film border as possible, because if not, when we go through and do this next adjustment, you'll really be able to see it. And this, that'll make sense in a few minutes here. I want this selection to be as close on that border edge as possible. Sometimes this is a huge pain in the butt. The selection is better than last time I did this, but this part wasn't so bad last time. It's silly because you can see pretty easily the difference between these two, but Photoshop cannot. Making some progress. Oh, so close. You want these borders as straight as possible because if they're not and we do the inverse selection on the film border, you can really see if your selection isn't square, if it's not nice and straight. It's so close. Come on. It's so close. I'm gonna call that good. That's better than last time. Uh, let's see if we can fill in this corner a little better. Real quick, good enough. I don't know why that just shifted down. Yeah, see there's this little piece that's not selected. I don't know why that just can't get on that. I mean, you can see the difference between the two. So we just have this little itty bitty piece we need to push up and it is not having it. I have no idea why this is struggling so hard. It's literally right there. That's extremely frustrating. I have just this little tiny piece that needs to be bumped up. You can see the difference. I'm 
not very straight, but better than it was. Okay, so now we do shift, control shift I to select inverse, and then we're gonna go back into camera raw filter. And you can't see this here, but you'll just have to remember that you've selected this film border portion of the image. The changes we make here are gonna appear on the main image, but they won't actually take place there. The changes that we'll see will be on the film border only where we've selected. So I'm gonna come up to, actually we're already in the curves panel, select the contrast page tab and let's darken up these film borders. I don't wanna go too dark, but I think there looks good. So we'll hit okay. And this is why you want to make sure you have this all lined up well, because if you don't, when we deselect this, you can see, like right here, you can see there's some weird imperfections where that this should be straight and it's not. So if you want to darken these film borders and spend some time to get everything selected, you can do that. I don't think it's worth it on this picture. And I think if we just crop this, it'll look a little cleaner rather than having the film borders. So when we go back to Lightroom, I'll crop this and go from there. At this point, this is when I would dust this. I'm not going to go into that in detail in this video. I have another video on how to dust film scans. So you, if you want to click on that, video i'll put a link in the description and on screen so you can see that um but this yeah this would be dusted once it's dusted hit Control s send that back to lightroom and we'll just wait for it to finish saving here okay so that's finished saving hit command tab to pull up our windows and so here's our edit back in lightroom that's interesting because those film borders look okay that's interesting so this is the edit that I did yesterday. This one did look better, but it's still really contrasty. Uh, this was the very first edit that I did. <laughs> Extremely contrasty. And then here's the original image. So if we hit the compare or C for the compare view, should be able to, we can see the difference between the two. And this is a lot cleaner. This is definitely a usable image. Reduce the blues and the shadows. Got rid of those like purplies. So let's get rid of those film borders. Hit the R key. And we'll just remove these real quick. It's definitely usable once we crop those borders out. And let me tab over to this poor guy. All right, hit the compare tool and then jump over and we'll take a look at these. I mean, that's a huge improvement. Like that's, that looks really nice. I think that's great. Got rid of some of the weird color casts. I mean, this isn't totally the image that we corrected here on the right, it's not totally perfect. There's still a little bit of issues like in the corners here. But to go from what we have on the left here to the right, I mean, that's huge improvement. That's definitely a usable image. I would even print that thing. <laughs> I, think, I think that's printable. Everything looks good. Yeah, that's, that's super clean. <laughs> that looks really nice. So there you have it. That's how you can go through and try to restore a overexposed or overdeveloped image. We'll uh, see you in the next one.